Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, February 7th, 2018. Uh, in this video, we'll take a look at uh, a couple items. We'll uh, at least get to gold. I've had several questions on gold and GDX in the trading room today. I'll share my thoughts there, um, and then uh, look at the broad markets. And if there's any time left, maybe I'll touch on crude oil and natural gas and some of the other things I've covered recently. All right, starting out here, uh, let's let's look at the start with the 60 minute charts on gold futures. Um, you know, if the, a recap, if you're new to the site or haven't caught up on the analysis, you know, the last time we were bullish on gold was back here. We went long on a breakout um, using GDX. Oh, gold, whatever. I pointed out a breakout here in gold. We had a bullish falling wedge. I like these 60 minute time frames for swing trading. Uh, and we got a nice rally. Um, got out of, personally, got out of my, my um, GDX longs a little early. Um, started to call for a top in gold or reversal. And it did come. Um, what we did is we traded sideways for a while. It, it's taken a while to start panning out. You can see we had this sideways trading range. It was a little pop over here sort of looks almost like an inverse or a, a not an inverse a regular head and shoulder stopping pattern a little bit you know with a left shoulder head and then a right shoulder like that and you would draw a slightly upward sloping neckline so uh, either way if that's the case then we've broken down back tested i am looking for more downside in gold um, and I'll, I'll show you some targets here in a second. Now, on the 60-minute chart, if you're trading gold futures, you can see I have a level marked here at about 1.1309.46. I believe I've been calling for move down to at least that level for a while now. So that would be the first area where we might get a bounce if the charts confirm. And again, these are gold futures, GC for you futures traders. But I like this chart because gold trades, you know, it's 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 you know, it's not like a a U.S. stock that trades mostly in the U.S. markets. Gold trades around the world, so the futures are going to show you the trades around the clock on gold, and that's why I continue to revisit these charts here. Uh, now let's look at the daily chart. Let's look at the bigger picture for you swing traders. Um, here's what I see on gold, and I pointed this out recently. We had a uh, divergent high. In fact, you know, if, if you followed me for a while, you know I like to see divergent highs and divergent lows, particularly on the daily time frame, in order to position for uh, lasting trend changes, you know, swing trades that can last for weeks, if not usually months or more. And, you know, we had a divergent high. You can see all the notes on the chart. There's a, it's hard to read. There was a little divergent high here. There was a correction. My target was hit back then. We put in an even bigger divergent high here. Um, I, I can't recall back then. I guess that was a target for there, and we fell a lot lower. Uh, made the case for a, you know, a bullish case in gold for a bottom back here in early 2016. That's all in the archives. Uh, gold put in a, a low back in December. GDX followed with a little flush out move in January, and then we got this big rally. So, um, and since then, it's been a series here. Let me clear out some of these lines. Um, Again, I put a lot of weighting on these divergent highs. We had a series of three divergent highs here. Divergent high number one, followed by a nice correction. Divergent high number two, followed by a correction. Divergent high number three. So those are all three consecutive divergent highs. Um, nice rally. But bigger picture is gold's, you know, the trend is up. I wanted to just make that very clear. Since that low, which I believe is the was the end of the bull market, or I'm sorry, of the bear market in gold, uh, the previous bear market, you know, we've, we've rallied quite a bit. If you look at the bigger picture, the trend is up. However, within that trend, there's been a lot of choppy. Uh, it's a good swing trading instrument, and there have been periods of these sideways grinds. These are what you want to avoid, and these are what you want to catch. So like I said, we were long. We did catch that bottom down there. And I've been warning for, you know, quite some time now that a top was in and we're going to look at, a, you know, I was looking for a near to intermediate term pullback in gold. And you can see that's now playing out. In fact, if you look at it simply here, here's the trend line. And again, I showed you that on the 60 minute. I think we looked at that on the 60 minute chart, but you can see a clear uptrend line on the daily chart. And then most importantly, we had these divergent highs right here negative divergence on the rsi negative divergence on the ppo and uh, where i'm going with this if you look at the the scope of these corrections following these other divergent highs in the past um 
this little little it's a pretty decent correction but so far that's not in line especially considering the scope of these divergences right now so i'll tell you what my expectation is i, I expect more downside we are at support now you can see i have two lines this is a support zone there was a gap back here quite a few reactions back here if you look at if i draw a line you can see the reactions at the top of that support zone there's the gap so we could have a little hiccup here a little little pause or a bounce or reaction in gold but i do favor a continued move down to about this 123 level you see that white line uh, let me clean up some lines again for you this is a very well-defined support level if you follow to the left here you can see all the reactions that we've had um, going back for the last over last year now a lot of advances have stopped there uh, earlier you can see there's a big gap there cap that advance cap that advance then we broke out so support once or uh, resistance i should say once broken becomes support so this is my preferred scenario this is what i'd like to see and if the charts confirm at the time meaning the intraday charts 60 minute charts the daily charts we might be able to go long for a swing trade there um it may may be more than just a quick swing trade but there is also the possibility and i'm going to show you that in a minute here on the longer term charts that we might keep you know i, I do expect a bounce off that level again if the charts confirm at the time <clears throat> if when we get there but uh, I can see the possibility of a continued move down here to about the 120 level uh, over time. So that that's uh, where gold may be heading. And let me show you why. Okay, if you followed the site for a while, you've heard me say many times that, in my opinion, any analysis on gold is incomplete without factoring in uh, technical analysis on the dollar, where the dollar is headed. So this chart is the Euro-US dollar pair. Uh, so it's you know, the Euro is by far the heaviest component, makes up m way more than over half of the dollar index. So if you want to know where the dollar is going, you chart the Euro or you chart this pair. So this is like looking at the dollar upside down. When you see this chart rising, prices rising, or the Euro-US dollar pair rising, that means the Euro is appreciating against the dollar, so the dollar is going down. And when the dollar drops, the price of gold in dollars goes, it's, it, you can buy more gold with a dollar. So in other words, there's an, a, an inverse correlation between the U.S. dollar and gold. And if you don't believe me, just chart it, take a 10-year, 5, 10, 20-year chart, overlay the U.S. dollar index with gold, and you will see an unmistakable uh, correlation, an inverse correlation between the two, uh, meaning one goes up, the other goes down. So uh right now we had and i pointed this out recently in fact on um, you know back here when i was covering the gold extensively i pointed out we had a very well-defined trend line in the euro us dollar pair a divergent high which was bearish i listed these two targets t1 and a final target zone we went on to hit my first target zone bounced around uh, that zone for a while then broke down hit my final target zone and uh that sparked this rally which also uh you know led to the rally in gold so that all lines up again remember this upside down chart of the dollar if you will now most importantly we put in another divergent high here and so far we're starting to move impulsively lower there's a support zone it's comparable to that support zone in gold not by coincidence either um, but if you zoom in you can see why i have those lines there there was a period of consolidation right there so we've now entered that support zone again I think we'll probably have some type of reaction, whether it's a bounce or just some consolidation. But uh, this chart lines up very well with my analysis for gold that I just showed you of some more downside. Uh, at least this level, about the 121 level in the euro US dollar pair, followed by a bounce that might give us a swing trading up. Uh, however, <clears throat> however, this is a pretty high, powerful divergent high, and we may see some more downside. Uh, something we need to keep an eye on. We can probably draw an uptrend line right here. In fact, that comes in as well. So, if again, if the intraday charts confirm, I think we'll have a trading op for gold, maybe for GDX as well, um, a bounce trade. It could morph into more, but it may it may be a fleeting trade. Now, a fleeting trade in gold. If you know, if gold bounces five percent, GDX is probably going to bounce. 15% especially if it's since it's been underperforming recently so uh, and then of course if it's up to you if you want to use nugget you know you can leverage that three times and you're talking on you know 45% or so return again we'll have to see don't want to get ahead of myself and give you price targets right now but this is what I'm looking for 
uh, I'm not interested in gold or GDX going long until and unless they get to these levels. And, and, and you know, again, that le comparable level that I was talking about on gold the, a minute ago. And uh, let's look at GDX before we look at the uh, longer term chart of the dollar. Uh, there's GDX. As you can see, it's underperformed. Um, you know, the reason is GDX, these are gold mining stocks and stocks are equities. The stock market just took a hard correction. I've seen this many times over, even though gold held up relatively well, even though the dollar was weakening or strengthening, um, gold's a flight to safety asset. And yes, GDX will also, you plot a long-term chart, GDX is going to follow gold. The, the, there's a almost a perfectly positive correlation. GDX tends to move more. I always say GDX is like a leveraged play on gold because when gold prices rise, if gold goes up 10%, the miners are going to go up 20, 30 because they're, that's their, you know, their bottom line goes up uh, and vice versa on the downside. But the, the, they, they move together. However, there are periods of time, uh, times where you see sharp sell-offs in, in the market, and because these are equities, they get sold down with the stock market. So you can see it's been a pretty sharp drop, and uh, you know I was, <clears throat> uh, you know, beating the bearish drums on GDX for a while after being bullish down here, and they've already fallen uh, about 12 and a half percent off the highs. Now, <clears throat> here's the nice thing about this: this chart also lines up with what I just showed you on gold as well as the US dollar and you can see a support level here there's a reaction back here but more importantly here's 2017 right here there's the beginning of the year every single pullback one two three four has been contained at this level and if you look at the proximity of that level to where we're at right now it meshes pretty well with that a little more downside in in gold that I'm looking for uh, a little more downside in the euro US dollar pair uh, and again, so that might make for a nice swing trade and we'll just have to take it from there. If we get that in the, in, in the charts confirm, especially the intraday charts confirm an entry at the time, uh, we're looking at a, a nice trade for, for GDX and then we'll have to decide, uh, you know, how far that might go. It's, it's again, first things first, we have to get there and then see the setup. Then I'll <clears throat> identify some price targets. Okay. And final chart on the dollar and then we'll move on. Uh, I had to shrink it down here. Hopefully if this comes out okay on the screen. I may have to move this down a little bit. This is a U.S. dollar index. So uh, this is obviously this is the dollar index. Dollars falling, it's going down. Dollars, if this is rising, the dollar is going up. Um, you know, for years, you know, for the last couple of years, I was highlighting this scenario that has played out very well. Uh, looking for a divergent eye in the dollar when we were rallying, uh, a big divergent. You could see the divergence forming. It was very clear to me, and that has played out. And we also had this very important support level right there. You can see it going back in time, how well that level has worked. So that was a sell signal, a, a pretty powerful sell signal. But however, you know, a lot of that divergence has played out. If you look up top here on the RSI, you can see these notes that I have. Oversold followed by negative divergence that usually marks highs in the dollars in other words you get oversold the dollar has a little correction kicks back makes a marginal new high a lot like what the scenario that i've been talking about in the broad markets that i could see playing out over the next few months um the you get negative divergence and that marks these corrections so uh these were big the big corrections in the dollar in, in recent years all came after these overbought and then divergent highs readings. It's overbought, usually doesn't do the trick. You get that shot across the bow. That's what I referred to this recent correction in the stock market as. Then you usually get a recovery rally. Uh, everybody's giddy because it makes a new high, but if you're not paying attention, you don't know how to read the charts, this tells you don't chase that new high. Negative divergence um, tells you that a breakout to new highs is likely, or a breakout to a new high is likely to fail. And uh, the, again, you can see they're all marked here as are the subsequent corrections. So, uh, and these are big corrections. These are big trend changes in the dollar. And this was a big divergent high. We're, this was the most overbought the dollar had been in in, in decades, if not ever. Uh, this chart spans back to about 1997. And you can see the powerful negative divergence. And again, that's played out now for a good correction. Uh, big drop in the dollar. You know, we're up around 104. The dollar's down to about 89 or so. However, okay, so that's what's happened. 
Um, and now let's see what will happen from here or what is likely to happen from here. I've had this line on this chart for a long, long time. It's a, a pretty well-defined support level. You can see it's capped all these advances back here, back in 2008, 2010. Uh, we broke out above there, that was bullish, we rallied, but now we've fallen back. Former resistance, once broken, becomes support. Not only that, but we have potential. Potential because it's not confirmed yet, but if, if that scenario plays out, if the dollar reverses soon, um, and we, we turn up here, we make a bullish cross on this weekly PPO, move up like that, uh, this is what I'm looking for. So this would give us a bounce. If we get a bounce off here, uh, that would be an objective target right there, maybe an area to you know short the dollar again. Uh, but right now we have this potential bullish divergence, the dollar at support. So I'm looking for a bounce in the dollar. And remember, the dollar and gold are inversely correlated. So if this plays out, and the point of going over all these charts is they are in alignment, um, you know, the, even these levels. So if we get this bounce in the dollar, dollar goes up, gold goes down. That's just one pretty fairly constant, uh, you know, in the relationship between the two. So there it is. So I'm not looking for a huge bounce. This is a pretty small divergent low. This was a powerful divergent high, um, but that's my near-term outlook for for um, gold in the U.S. dollar. Okay, and a quick recap on the stock market. Nothing that I haven't covered in recent days, but again, if you've missed those videos, uh, here's a, a key uptrend line in the SPY, the S&P 500 tracking ETF. We overshot those levels, snap back up, very bullish to see that uh, level breached uh, intraday, only to see us close with a very powerful green candle back above there. So uh, near term, you know, I, I've, you know, a scenario, um, it's hard, you know, it's hard to put too much weighting on it right now. It's just something I'd like to see. There's not enough evidence in the charts yet to say we're going to get it, but that would be a, a move up, take out the previous highs, erase this whole sell off, um, and then a reversal and ultimately go on maybe a little zigzag there to break that downtrend line. And I see the spy coming down quite a bit. So I do believe a uh, significant correction, probably a bear market, meaning a drop of 20% or more is coming in 2018 and uh, if this scenario plays out then we're probably looking at maybe uh, a couple of weeks or a couple of months of upside i also have a scenario i'm going to get to here in the 60 minute charts that we're not out of the woods yet as far as this bounce we may come back in and undercut those lows once more i'll, I'll get to the intraday charts here in a second but as i've mentioned a lot of the long-term trend indicators all of the long-term trend indicators are still bullish and as i said the other day uh, as ugly as this might have seemed to some, this wasn't even this drop fell shy of the 10% mark, which is the, you know, the technical definition of a correction. Uh, we came close, but uh, the S&P 500 fell only, I think it was like nine and three, nine and three quarters percent or something. So as ugly as it was, it's not a catastrophic move. It's just a, you know, there was a lot of hot air. That hot air got let out of the market. Uh, Long-term trend indicators are bullish. And you guys, uh, if you followed me for a while, you know I like to use the PPO as a, as a trend indicator. I use the, the 9 EMA, the signal line for the PPO, not the PPO line. And that's because that's the last of the two to cross. It's the white line here. And it does a phenomenal job of defining the trend. If you can see here, when the PPO signal line, the 9 EMA, is above this zero line that I just highlighted here, the trend is bullish. Uh, and it often acts as support and resistance as it did back here. The, the signal line came tested made and bounced off it. Tested it here, tested it here. And so that trend indicator is still bullish as well. I also noted here that we went from extremely overbought all the way down in just a, a week or so to oversold on the RSI. So in a bull market, if there's more life in this bull, then you want to jump all over oversold readings because they're very rare. You don't get many. This is the last time the U.S. markets were, uh, the SPY was oversold. And from there, uh, the market rallied 38%. Uh, that was back in 20, 2016 there. So uh, you can see that's where you want to step in and buy. Here was another oversold reading right here. Uh, so as I often say, in a bull market, oversold, readings are they're rare and they're very fleeting usually you hit that 30 level and then that's it you bounce uh, whereas overbought during a bear market tends to become more overbought meaning you cross 
well over that 70 level and it tends to stay overbought for extended period of times as it did here inverse happens during a bear market you get a bear market uh, you want a short uh, a bounce back to the 70 level oversold level but you don't go long on your first tag of oversold uh, because oversold tends to become more oversold we're not there yet I just wanted to point that out um, I do believe we're in the you know ninth inning of a bull market and the end is you know a uh, bear market will most likely kick off I think in 2018 but it's not there yet so these are the facts. This is when you want to step in and buy. I know a lot of people don't want to buy when it looks like the sky is falling, but that's where the money is made. So there's the S&P. And again, I've covered that in detail recently. Same thing on QQQ. Extremely overbought, fell down to oversold. Uh, primary uptrend line was breached intraday and with a big green candle closing back above it. So all in all, that's uh, bullish and just, you know, reset prices so far it was a even for a bounce trade you could have gamed it and already taken profits and you would have done pretty well depending on what you traded now let's look at the 60 minute charts uh, all right let's start with the nasdaq 100 uh this was the trend line uh that that triggered it all the you know i had these trend lines on all the large cap indices the dow the s p 500 and the nasdaq 100 they all broke at the same time and uh, as I said at the time, that, that did trigger a sell signal. First sell signal we've had on the markets all year. And, um, but I also mentioned until all five FANG, FANG stocks, F-A-A-M-G, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet, which is G-O-O-G or G-O-O-G-L. Until they all reported, which was right after this point, I didn't expect us to break down or melt down. I said the fireworks would probably begin after they all reported, and that's exactly what happened. So remember, this is, again, this is all hindsight stuff that I've covered recently. We traded around in this range for a while. The fangs were out of the way. The earnings were great. You know, everything, the, you know, the economic data has been strong recently, but this market just had too much hot air. They had to let it out, and that's what happened. So once that support level broke, um you fell down i had this support zone here you can see it marked all the way back here some reactions reactions there and we fell to that support zone danced around it for a while um had a couple bounces off the bottom and then once it gave way boom that led to the waterfall sell-off now all right so that's what happened we all know what happened but uh where do we go from here well you can see uh as i often say support once broken then becomes resistance so if we look at that same support zone um which was you know i had it outlined even before we got there as a target zone the fact that we had the reactions around it helps to validate that again is an important level so and i tried to get this video out earlier today had a lot going on in fact this is my second recording i did a recording it was over 22 minutes and the second i hit the stop button and it's supposed to start processing the recording app crash so i'm re-recording this very frustrating hopefully this one will come out um either way here's what i wanted to point out um we've had a sharp rally off the lows and we ran into resistance this was the first logical the first significant resistance a level this zone here and you can see how perfect technical analysis is working and it tends to work great once volatility spikes we came up pierced just into the bottom of that zone but failed to even print a 60 minute close that's just a candlestick wick they call that a shadow or a wick and so far we've reversed off there um we may go down more if we may take this out what you need to see is this get taken out as well as there's a comparable zone on spy or the s p 500 i'll get to in a minute um however we've had a pretty sharp move and we may consolidate for a while and i wanted to share there's a possible scenario here that i can see as well play out and i'll be on watch for this um i may take some profits now on some of the longs that i took on friday and monday i'll show you why uh, that scenario would look something like this and again we don't have to get it but it's uh, something i'm on the lookout for i would draw divergence lines here let's say that we fail here move back down uh, it's possible we have a V bottom so far it has been a V bottom but usually during big moves 
uh, from my experience, they're usually those lows are tested again. And not only are they tested, sometimes you'll reverse just shy, but most often you undercut those lows just slightly. It, 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 and that happens, I, I don't know, there's many reasons it may happen, but I suspect a lot of traders that bought around the lows or even bought anywhere up here once they saw the recovery set their stops just below the recent lows. So the market tends to, you know, it's very tricky and it likes to shake out a lot of weak handed longs that, that bought that, suck in some more shorts. So here's a scenario where we undercut those lows slightly, then reverse. What that would do, um, clear it out, I'm starting to make a mess of these drawings here. Essentially what that would do is give us a nice positive divergence and that's what I love to see on the 60 minute charts to position for a trend trade. So if we go down, work our way down over the next week or so, undercut those lows, um, you know, there'll be fear and blood in the streets again, just like there was here, probably even worse. And that would be a great time uh, if, if um, we see, a, a, you know, evidence of a reversal, or we see these divergences setting up. There it is. So bullish divergence. And then that might lead to that scenario that I was talking about uh, on the daily chart where we go take out the highs uh, and then put in a divergent high setting the stage up for an excellent swing trading off to the downside uh, so that's what I'm looking at right now hard to say for sure if we're going to get it but let's see how things develop here I, I wouldn't rule it out and more importantly here's support I'm, I'm sorry resistance we need to take this resistance zone out if we do you can see these are the same lines I've had on this chart for a while the levels are marked here in blue um, so whether you're trading the NQ futures or you're trading just QQQ, uh, you'll just have to correlate these levels to a QQQ chart. They should align. And uh, let's look at the S&P 500 and show you the, the key levels there. All right. So this was the, the, the uptrend line that needed to break. That's when we got our, our sell signals on the U.S. markets right here. Uh, same story. It floundered around to all the FANG stocks had reported and then started moved its way down. I have not modified these lines. You can see how well technical analysis works during corrections. You know, they stepped in and bought right there at that, that 2733 target, bounced around there for a while. And once that broke, the waterfall sell-off started. And so far we've kicked back. Now we did have a resistance zone here. Yeah, oh, wrong tool. Uh, we had a resistance zone right here that we've taken out now on the SPY. You can see these, I had this level here before, and we did stop on the first tag at the top of that resistance zone, uh, pulled back and now moved up. So um, the next level at this point right here, you can see is at 27.33. We need to take that out. There's some reactions back there. And again, keep you want to watch the QQQ or the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 together. Um, I don't trade the Dow much, but, you know, we can look at that. I had that chart recently, same story, you know, and so far it's been a V recovery. So uh, things are getting a little hot and there's also resistance. I should add a resistance line right here. I'll do that for you right now if you're a Dow trader. Um, you can see there's the reactions off that level. There were reactions back here. So that's it. We've had a pretty sharp balance. Markets are at resistance right now. They probably need to take a breather here. Um, they may continue to power on up. My convictions on the very near term direction is not super strong right now. I have to tell you that the time to buy was, was, uh, the ideal time to buy was yesterday, either, you know, during the meltdown or when, when you saw those, uh, primary uptrend lines get taken back. Uh, as of now, not very objective to add. If we get a pullback, especially if we get that undercut of the lows and the charts confirmed, that would be a great long entry. We may or may not get that. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have to keep an eye on from there. All right. Um, I think I've covered everything I needed to. We don't have time to get to oil. This video has gone on long enough. So let's hope Hope this one uh, doesn't crash when I stop it. Uh, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.